joined now by the national sports editor of the Daily Hive and its offside sports vertical. You know him as Rob the Hockey Guy on Twitter, Rob Williams. Back here with Sir Harrison Price. I understand you were in Vegas last week for the Canucks game. Oh yeah, great game. <laughs> yeah, went down went down to 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 Vegas with some friends. So I was uh, sitting with the people in in uh, in Vegas. Second time I've I've caught a game down there. Uh, mm-hmm. The first the first time I saw a game was the Canucks' very first game in Vegas, which was during the 2017 18 season. When of course they were just dreadful and Vegas was a juggernaut and they had lost six, three and thought, okay, you know, for the last few months going, okay, this is going to be a pretty good game. You know, this might be for first place in the division. We thought at one time and uh, we get down there and the Canucks lose six, three once again. Uh, I think I was there for that first night and me we were there as well. Gilman yeah. and I were eating steak by the third period. I think somewhere else. Right. Yeah. You, you and Gilman <laughs> bailed yeah. on the game. Yeah. And went to eat steak, yeah. and we toughed it out because you know real fans never leave. Rob always that's chance. right. That's right. Um, <laughs> you know what's interesting wow. about about Vegas? So like being in in that crowd, like you'd think, I don't know, like in a lot of cities, you have like this really good team defending Stanley Cup champs. You get a huge influx of visiting fans that are in the building. You think there'd be lots of chirps going on left, right, and center. I got the sense that they, nobody really cared. They're so no. used to having visiting no. fans there. Yes. This is still new to them. There's, you know, it's, and in some ways, like Canucks fans, they, at least the ones I saw, like were not very obnoxious. Like maybe they would have been if the, the game turned out differently, but it just seemed like everybody just sort of got along and it wasn't like adversarial, like in the, in the slightest, like quite different than I've seen, like in, in you're just a blue man right. group. You're a blue man group. It's well, just another no, show. I was, trip, I was you know? just going to say like, you know, the vibe is very much dueling pianos. <laughs> like let's sit there arm in arm and sing a song, you know, about a piano man. Yeah. So no, you're right. The, the vibes are great. I hope you didn't look up into the rafters there though, because <laughs> they've got something that we don't have and it's blinding to ah, some of us yes. blinding with anger and rage. I, I did like that though. Like I caught like the, the little parade they do with like, they have like the Vegas showgirls and the drummers and everything that like go marching down the street all the way into the, uh, to the rink. And I, I always, I kind of get a chuckle because I know like the Canucks kind of tried to copy the like drummer thing. And like the Canucks, when the Canucks do it, they have like, there's like, I don't know how many people there, like six or seven guys yeah. drumming. And it's just kind of like, it's, it's fine. And like, yeah. but like the, the thing they're copying is like Vegas where they got like, they got like, I don't know how many drummers they have. It was like 20 or 30 drummers with like lights and all sorts of stuff. It's just like the, the Canucks copy that's just not close. Mm. Seventh man. Yeah. I, I'll yeah, be like, exactly. you know racing the seventh man okay let's get into it black skate do you want to see 12 and 4 the canucks are in these jerseys do you want to see them in the playoffs why not i mean if especially if the if the players like wearing them and they seem to and especially if if they you get it into your head in some way that this is these are our lucky jerseys when we wear these um good things happen although you know, they've lost three of their last four in the black skate. So I don't know if the shine's off it now. Boy, we're pouring some water on it there. Uh, <laughs> another Rob Williams cornerstone outdoor viewing parties. And yes. you did the, you did the work on this where any update on that? <laughs> yeah. I asked the Canucks. They're not, they're not ready to like, they, they didn't say they're not doing them, but they're, they're uh, not ready to release, you know, or maybe they don't have all their, the, details finalized which is fine so they hmm. they're not ready to um fully you know, reveal yeah. what they yeah really give much of a comment on the situation uh city of vancouver spokesperson did give me something though uh and I'll, I'll give you guys just the quote from from the, the city of vancouver the city is thrilled that the canucks are in the stanley cup playoffs we are in early conversations with the canucks and other partners regarding supporting plans now my question was in regards specifically to outdoor viewing parties. So I don't know if, you know, that statement leaves a little bit of room for, are they doing supporting plans on something else? Is it specifically regarding outdoor viewing parties? Um, I'm sure a lot of people have seen the photos or perhaps have seen it for themselves outside Rogers arena. 
They've put up these brand new images of uh, players on under the viaduct there and on the side of Rogers Arena. That I, that space in the plaza is not big enough for like a proper viewing party that the ones that we've seen um, elsewhere. Uh, but that you know that is an indication that they're you know they're getting ready for for playoff time and and um, and figuring out what they're what they're going to do. Uh, two years ago, I asked when you know when we saw this explosion of outdoor viewing parties for playoffs in round one, like e seemingly every city had a really good one, particularly in Canadian cities. You know, Maple Leaf Square has been doing it for a long time, uh, but we saw the Red Lot and the moss pit in calgary and edmonton mm -hmm. those those look epic i mean the visuals look phenomenal and i do wonder and i, I did ask the canucks then like are you guys would this be something that you guys would do uh they said at that time that they were looking into like they were beginning the process of of you know looking into doing something like this in during the 2019 20 season where it looked like they might make the playoffs so i do wonder if they're um going to be doing something and and perhaps we'll find out uh quite soon where um where would be the best place for an outdoor viewing party rob have you pinned that down because as you mentioned the plaza is yeah. too kind of small but, so, so where would you want to see it yeah the the one that makes the most sense to me uh by far i'd say is uh concord pacific place just uh south of rogers arena across the street uh, basically where they, you know, where they have the, uh, Cirque du Soleil tents right. and they, they, so they, they've, he, they've held events in that exact space before. Uh, imagine having that, you've got false Creek and the water, right. You know, that's your backdrop right there with the, with the arena, you know, in the shadow of the arena across the street. That to me seems perfect. I think it's enough space and what you do is I, I know like, you know, some people, as soon as you say outdoor viewing parties, they think of game seven in 2011 and, and, and the riots, you know, I think the learning from that is not that we can't ever hold outdoor viewing parties. It's that you can't just have a free for all in the middle of Granville street and invite whoever, where, wherever have no security checkpoints. Like that's definitely the wrong way to do this. But if you learn from what other cities have done, you have you have this as an event. You have it as a, a ticketed event. Maybe I don't know, ten dollars, twenty dollars goes to Canuck Place, and you have security checkpoints, and you have a fenced-off area, and you have you know some form of crowd control that way, like an outdoor uh, concert. You know, like an outdoor concert. Exactly. You, yes. Yeah. Exactly. Like like we've we've held events like this in the city, and. You know, especially round. I mean, if we hold have a riot in round one, I mean, that will be the most shameful riot of the fall. Um, but I don't think there's a risk. You know, I don't think you're amping up the the risk of of trouble too much if you hold an event like that and you have some sort of control over who gets in the gate, what they're bringing in their bags, like all of those things. I think it can be done uh, safely, and I think it would be you know, a huge marketing win for the Canucks. Like if you had, you know, we, we've seen these visuals, like when a team wins a big playoff game and they pan to the outdoor crowd, um, it's awesome, right? And mm -hmm. you, and that way you also get a ton of people uh, in that can't afford, you know, the, you know, what are playoff tickets going for right now? Like four, four or $500 plus, like it's, it's not affordable to get a playoff ticket unless you, you know, have some sort of connection right now so you allow a whole different group of people to come in and and experience the, you know the excitement of a of a of a playoff game so i think it's a slam dunk to to do, do and, it for do it yeah. for home and road games absolutely yeah. yeah yeah why not um i mean the only thing that threatens it is is rain in, in the city of vancouver but you know like like other cities have had these and they get rained out and and that's fine that they just they you know you watch the game somewhere else that day and sometimes they don't. Sometimes there's rain. I, I mean, I, I saw Jurassic Park in the rain. It's it still happened, and there were some brave souls out there to watch the game. So Absolutely. you never know. Um, Patterson, he uh, he's shown signs here at the very least, Rob. And uh, you guys, you guys wrote on Patterson doing the dirty work, the gritty side yeah. of BP forty. Tell us about it. Yeah, I, I wrote a story yesterday just about about Pedersen. I, th I thought it was notable on Monday. I mean, I think everyone saw it. Like the, he's you know, 
screening the goalie on on three of the goals, providing the net front on the uh, on the power play. I, I didn't know what to read, how to read into his, the question, how he answered one of the questions. I don't know if you you almost seemed like I don't know if you just don't, didn't want to. I think my sense was that he just didn't really want to get into the to the the premise of the question rather than being like salty about playing the net front, but he's really good at it. And I think that that's something that, you know, we're seeing him do that. Of course we, you know, eventually he's got to score goals. He's got to be doing the deeks. He's got to be, you know, getting his, his big shot on, on net. But in the meantime, it's great that he's able to help in other ways. So, you know, willing to go to the front of the net to, to screen the goalie, to help, um, you know, help his, his team score goals. He's also got a career high in hits this season. He's among the among the team's hit leaders. Like he's fifth in hits this season on the Canucks. He also is first in block shots among Canucks forwards. So like these are the things that, you know, that are not the glamour. These are not the glamour stats, right? And and going to the front of the net, like, you know, sometimes like you can find goals there, but like, you know, sometimes like like Monday. You know he's, he's he helps on three goals. He gets one assist, right? So it doesn't help you on the on the the point totals necessarily, in that regard. And of course, Pedersen's a, a fantastic two way player. Like he doesn't he doesn't cheat the game in the in the defensive zone. Or you know, so um, yeah, I, I think that there's you know we can credit him with a lot of things, and I I think that are away from the traditional offensive glamour stats uh, that you put up. He, this season might go down as the, you know, if you're on the outside looking in, if you were a Jets fan looking in on Vancouver media, I, I don't know that every hockey fan would, would get why. And I don't think it's critical of Elias Pettersson, but I don't know that they would understand the analysis of Elias Pettersson with 87 points. To, like he might be the most right. criticized 90 point player in the history of the NHL. But yeah, I don't know that it's unfounded. You know, like I, yeah. I do get a lot of the analysis that he gets. It's a credit to him. I mean, it, it, the bar is so high. Like we've just seen, guess, yeah. we've seen his best, and we know when it's not there, right? Like right. He, he's not. He's he's. It's just it's just it's it's one of those things where you just know when it's there and when it's not. Like when he's moving the way he's moving with the puck, the way he's handling the puck, um, you know when when Pedersen is is you know at playing at 100%, and I don't necessarily mean, uh, you know, injury-wise, but playing at uh, 100% confidence, 100%, um, you know, doing his deeks, right? Like, like we know when, when that's not there, we know when it's not there. And he hasn't been, you know, optimal PD for the last mm -hmm. couple months. And... He gets a couple points yeah. tonight. He's top fifteen in the NHL. <laughs> At the same time, like it's incredible. Like you say that's that, and that it's unreal. So yeah. I think a lot of the things right now concerning the Canucks are just like everyone wants to see them hitting their stride at the right time. Right? They had they had most of their success in the first half of the season. Hasn't gone quite their way since the All Star break, which is you know a, a large sample size now. And I think people are, you know, getting a little bit nervous. And I think that's why that that win against Vegas on Monday was so huge, because you know they they've gone a month without beating a playoff team. Like people are starting to wonder. I think like, and I think people are still wondering. Like, are they are are they pretenders? Like, are they Stanley Cup pretenders? How many teams in the Western Conference are hoping that they get Vancouver in round one versus you know a lot of the other you know a lot of very good yeah. teams, admittedly, in the Western Conference. Um, I think you're going to see when the regular season ends and, you know, you, and all the analysts are coming up with their first round predictions. I think you're going to see a lot of people picking the Canucks to lose in the first round. I think you're right. I think you're right. Just walking around now, Bailey, yesterday talking to some fans and friends, um, I, I think people are nervous about the Canucks. I, I think if you had talked to people at the All-Star game, this is a cup contender. You know, uh, we're winning Give rounds. Give us respect. Gotta, absolutely. <laughs> we're absolutely going to win a round. Look, they have been a 500 hockey team since the All-Star break. Yeah. So, you know, the, the on a significant sample, the last couple months have showed us that they're perhaps not 
ready for prime time. We'll see who they draw. We'll see what kind of role or slump they're on heading into the playoffs with four games with four games left. Great stuff, Rob. Thanks for this, buddy. We'll catch Thanks, up guys. next week. Sounds good. Hey, everybody. If you're enjoying what you're seeing here, then follow along with Secure Some Price on YouTube. I promise more content coming. They call it, the kids call it subscribe on YouTube. Well, how about liking it? Do that as well. Smash it right now.